hello python programmers so in this video i'm going to show you that how you can create a countdown timer using python so first of all let's see what will be the final output so this is a small gui i want to count down this till 10 first we'll set this start 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 1 0 okay so i know this is not a very attractive looking and impressive project but still this is a good project if you are beginner and intermediate because this program will polish your some of the skills like how to handle functions how to handle the kinter gui and how to handle the local and global variable so you don't need any external module kinter is required to create the gui but kinter comes pre-installed with i guess above 3.5 version of python so you don't need to install that and and let's just start writing our code Okay, so we are into a empty file. Let's start writing our code. Okay, so let's first import our required libraries from Kinter. Import star or import all. Then I don't think we need time also here. Okay. So first of all, we'll create our GUI. Let me leave some spaces for the countdown functions. The variable will be root to create the tk class variable then we'll set the geometry root dot geometry metry there should no geometry <laughs> and the size will be 180 by 150 Okay, so let's create a variable which will display the numbers for the countdown. Make sure that this L is capital. The window is root. And the font is times new roman and the size is 20. Okay. Now let's grid our label into the Kinter GUI at the row. Let's say first and column second now let's create the entry which will take the input from the user so let's create a string variable first which will say times times is the name of our variable this is a string var make sure that the e is capital here and the text variable here is times so let's grid our entry even dot grid at the row third and at the column second there should be a comma here at the column second and then let's create our first variable which will set the number I will explain you the concept why we are having two buttons first to set and second to start so first let's create our two buttons it will be in the root window and the text will be set let's make this capital <laughs> and the width is equal to 20 and the command that this button will trigger is set timer then let's grid our button into the kinter window 
at the row fourth at the column second and the padding from the x or the distance from the x axis to this button is 20 units now let's create our second button which will uh, be required to start our countdown button once again in the root the text will be start and the width is also the same I forgot a comma here the width is also the same but the command here is countdown let's say this is the variable countdown okay now let's grid this button also into our window add the row 6 then this is not a string here add the row 6 and add the column second again and the pad x is 20 okay now let's close our main loop to complete our GUI and let's first create a global variable t so when the user first set a number in our entry and press this button set timer then let me show you what will happen left let uh, set timer I guess this is what the variable name uh, function name was yes we don't need any parameter here then we'll call our global uh, it should be global global variable t and then we'll set t is equal to t plus integer of e1 dot get and then we'll simply return t so that the value of t is is now not zero but actually this uh, number which the user has entered into this e1 entry box so you must be wondering that why why haven't i extracted this over here after i have just written the entry entry box component commands so if i have extracted the value from here then the value will be zero and not because this line will be executed as soon as the program runs and then the value inside the e1 entry box is zero so the zero will be stored in t uh, hence we won't get any countdown so this is why i have created two functions so let me write this code then i will explain you step by step that how the value will go in all these functions so first let's create the countdown countdown function no parameters again required we'll call our global t variable and if the t is greater than zero then what we'll do here is we'll configure our uh, is this the right spacing yes okay so l1 dot configure and the text will be t then we'll decrease the t by one value and then the l1 will be changed after let's say 1000 microseconds and the function called will be countdown so what will happen here is if 
the number is greater than 0 now let's take a example the user enters a number 0 now the t is 0 here for the initial condition then the user enters 10 what will happen here is the user will press this button initially the value of the entry box is 0 mind this the initial value of the entry box is 0 so when the user press this button then we'll go in this function set timer function then we have called our global t variable then the t will be changed to the number 10 now the t will become integer 10 so after the value is set the user will press the countdown button to start so what will happen here is this function will firstly call the global t value which is having 10 now if the 10 is greater than 0 which is obviously true then l1 will be configured as t which is 10 then t is equal to t minus 1 which is 9 and then this this countdown function will again be triggered and the value of t is 9 so obviously it's greater than 0 it's again changed to 9 and then the value is decreased to 8 then the function is run again and again and again until the value becomes elif the value becomes equal to 0 because we don't want to go in negative value the program will send end this is for me to confirm that the loop has ended and then we'll configure our uh, sorry configure our l1 as go just like racing <laughs> okay so let me see if there is anything left and i don't think so anything is left here so let's save this and run this again we are having an error invalid syntax at the line 27 because this should be a comma okay let's run this again and we are not getting the button start countdown because uh, this is b2 dot grid here now let's set the value as 10 set start the counter 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 1 and go is the error <laughs> okay let me see what is the error uh, unknown option dash go okay it should be text is equal to go and let's again set to a smaller number and start 5 4 3 2 1 go so <laughs> this was a small project but for the beginners you have learned a lot of things like how the global variable works the concept of global and local variables the variables which can be used only inside a functions are called the local variables and the global variables are the variables which are present for the entire program or for the entire script so this was the concept which was greatly and very efficiently explained in this program then we have learned that how the function works and some small things which will be required when you create some big program so 
this is it for this video and in my channel i create such short but programs filled with concepts so if you want to see them then check out my channel and i'll meet you there bye bye